Libra. Hello Libra, this is your forecast for May 2014. And yes, we're continuing to navigate through some tricky terrain, but you can do it, uh, Libra. Why? Because you are the sign of balance. And you have Mars with you in your sign, which you will have all the way to July 25th. Normally it's just a six week transit, and we've had Mars in this area since December of last year eight months straight through. So it's giving you uh, direction, it's giving you uh, uh, ambition, it's also giving you your drive to actually, more than at any other time, to go out there and balance your life. And uh, it gives you that Marsy nature too, more than it normally does because you're such a peaceful person, uh, ruled by Venus. But having Mars here for you, you're, you're more outgoing, you're more, uh, Mm, should I say sharp and uh, to the point and this is also how people might just perceive you because Mars being in the first house of yours is also in the rising sign so this is how you you come out and across the people that you're that much more focused right now you're, you're, you're like antsy to get ahead antsy to, to get your life into those compartments that you have so hard worked for the last couple of years now, we still have a little bit of a hangover from April, and uh, May is still holding some of this grand square that we're working on. That means we got four planets all squaring off on each other, which is created by two oppositions. And uh, it could be a little feisty, but you know what? We're, we're in labor. <laughs> we were in labor in April, and you might be listening to this on the April side, too. And if you haven't birthed yourself yet, then this will be delivered now in May, when these major decisions in your life now are seemingly needed to be made. And uh, for you, the areas that are uh, highlighted uh, is the first house. That's you, yourself, your personality how you come across as opposed to the seventh house which has to do with your partner your significant other or those people that you work with very closely one-on-one -on -one, and how you relate together and upon each other the other uh, opposition that we we have in works for you is between a career and the home life and so your career wants to expand all of that inner self of you just wants to now go out spread your wings and uh, expand and, and this whole last year especially it's been calling you wanting to move forward and yet you might have felt that things have been held back a little bit due to jupiter was retrograde for a big portion of this time but also because of the opposition that it's getting here pluto in the fourth house which has to do with family there might have been family matters uh, that have been uh, important to uh, uh, transform uh, pluto is all about transformation uh, it could be uh, just your roots, your past, a lot of things going on down deep below the surface. Pluto always goes like into that subterranean uh, within ourself. So Pluto is wanting to um, renew. Uh, Pluto makes everything new. But first it brings down an old structure, then it transforms. And see, it's going to be in a big way because now Jupiter coming upon it, even though it's a little testy while it's in its opposition, it's there for a reason, okay? So you might feel a lot of, not just anticipation, you might be feeling a lot of frustration, uh, something wanting to kind of break free, and sure enough, it will. And once we're done with it, Jupiter now has then empowered this planet, infused it, if you wish, with Jupiter now that will have the potential once we're ready to move on, which we'll see from next month. But uh, yeah, you'll see the area of uh, career just open up big time. Uh, Pluto now that, that might have held something back or been in a controlled matter in, in the home life. Well, that was needed so Jupiter could do this leap of faith. So that control is going to start giving up a little bit. Now, uh, the seventh house is uh, the other, okay? That could be your spouse or um, it could be a partner that you're working with has uh, 
given you a little bit of this wanting to have perhaps a little bit more space more freedom maybe you have been needing more space and freedom so the togetherness here between you might have been doing the seesaw balance what is too much what is too little remember it's the scales right but it, it is exciting because as we're coming through this now and it's been a little tricky because we've got to go all the way back to your birthday of last year um, birth month should i say their end of uh, September into October, this was lit up. And uh, then it gave us a little break, but then it lit up again here around New Year's. So go back and check it out. Same thing here now. And we spoke about this in the April forecast, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it right now. We wanna look at what is taking place here now in May on top of this. Let's start with your, your sun and your Mercury. Uh, this month here is in the 8th house, so you're looking over your financial situation, either along with your partner, or it could be banking or other financial institutions, it could be uh, taxes, tax returns, debts, and so forth. Maybe also, uh, if so, it's a good time for to consolidate, you know, so that you can make more out of this money that you do have. And uh, Saturn here in the 2nd house is more your own income stream. So Saturn's trying to build you a very sound foundation here. and You've been plugging along at this here over a couple of years now uh, so that you could uh, shore up and secure, you know, future years. We're, we're talking a, a full 28 years when you're done with this <laughs> is the foundation that you're putting down now. So whatever hard work it is, sure Saturn will keep you to it, but it is so worth it and it's so going to pay off for you, Libra. Okay, and you're going to have a full moon here this month, uh, which is May 14th, coming in here, um, visiting Saturn. So there might be a, a big financial, uh, not necessarily discussion, maybe it's an opportunity, or, or maybe something's going to be illuminated. Think about the full moon, right? Illuminating your area of financial income. What is this going to do for you, right? This full moon is going to be in Scorpio. Um, so, yes, this is definitely something that is felt. It's deep. Uh, the focus can be super sharp here this month on this full moon in the area of not just your income, which the second house rules, but it's also uh, your, your feeling of self-worth, okay? It's the house of values. So how you feel your, your worth is valued or not, okay? That's going to come up. <clears throat> then we also have Venus here, your day-to-day -day routines. Now in April, it cruised through your sixth house. Maybe we're paying a little bit more attention and uh, you might be seeing this on the April side of this forecast. So you'll notice that here in April that um, your, your diets might have been a, a focus, maybe working out a little bit more. Uh, but in a joyful way, uh, actually putting a lot of love behind it because that's what Venus does. But it's only going to be in this area until the uh, very beginning here of May. Already May 3rd, it is moving into your 7th house and leaving now your day-to-day -day, uh, routine. So from the 3rd, 7th house, Venus in Aries, it's a fire Venus, okay? So you're going to be riveting up those engines. Uh, taking new steps, bold steps, which Aries likes to do. Uh, you might initiate new things here between you and your partner. And for those of you who are single, well, you might just go out there and initiate some form for contact, either by reaching out to, to some past person, or it could be uh, meeting up with some groups perhaps, where you could find a new partner. Then we have um, uh, the, the, full, the new moon, I'm sorry, the new moon is in your ninth house this month and it's not before the end, so it's around the 28th, 29th coming in. And for you, uh, I'd like to say that having it in Gemini is something that you love. Why? Well, it is because you're, you're such a, mm, should I say, person of curiosity. You, you love to know things, you love to study, you love to read. Uh, the ninth house is all about education, so having a new moon in this area right now, for those of you taking on any exams or tests, it should be powerful. Uh, it is with you, it's supporting you, and it is giving you a whole year's worth of empowered energy in this area of 
um, study. So uh, you could put down those uh, new moon intentions about saying that you want to give yourself that extra time so that you could do go do those researches that you love to do. Gemini is also very communicative, so you might just come to see that it's going to be a very busy month as far as uh, reaching out and communicating. And uh, with those uh, both close and at far, uh, Gemini also rules, of course, you know, your, your immediate surroundings, your neighborhood, uh, neighbors and so forth, and the closer community. Um, the ninth house, though, is those far away, so you might find yourself chatting or reaching out more to them this month. So what do we have here at top of the month? Let's go through it. We have Mercury, communication, agreements, anything written. Uh, we have it opposed to Saturn here on uh, May 3rd. So make sure that, mm, that you feel okay about whatever it is you're signing. And if you don't, well, just delay it a little bit. Not that Saturn delays and not that Mercury is in retrograde. It's just when they're at uh, in opposition, they're a little bit at odds. <clears throat> so you might not really see it eye to eye the way that you, you would like. But it will come in here just here after a couple of few days. So wait till after the 7th. If you're okay with it, go ahead. Then we have the 4th. We've got the Sun, which is in essence you. Uh, now here, training Pluto. And this is a powerful um, position. Uh, Pluto will come in with a super laser a clear beam of uh, understanding, recognition, and empowerment uh, in the areas here for you, which will be between, um, hmm, let me take a look at that, <laughs> between the fourth and the eighth house for you. So Pluto in the fourth, so it comes from family, it comes from your roots, or it comes from deep, deep, deep within, and then a shining here from the sun uh, in the eighth house of shared resources, so money. It could be news about money. If you've uh, applied for a loan or uh, any grants, well, then good news, or also a good time to, to put an application out. Uh, followed by the Sun sextiling Jupiter. Well, Jupiter expands everything it touches, so this will be between your 8th house and your 10th house of career. Also great news, maybe here between the 4th and the 6th, if you have any interviews or any kind of talks with the higher-ups great time to do so. Uh, it looks like you'll be able to present yourself in a very sincere and deep and authentic way. Mercury uh, is moving into this uh, area of uh, education, higher thinking, research and so forth, into that communicative sign of Gemini. So that will be into your ninth house on the 7th and you'll just enjoy a whole month of chit chat and, uh, and figuring things out and maybe being on the uh, out and about, short trips and so forth. Then we have the 11th, which is uh, Venus and Mars. So Venus is all love and Mars is all about uh, direction, goals and so forth. And when they're opposite, well, it's all about finding the balance between the feminine and the masculine, first and foremost within yourself which when we speak about relationship, this is a typical relationship, uh, not just aspect, but the two planets together, but it's also the relationship, first and foremost, <clears throat> that you have with yourself, the inner self, the inner balance, and dance between Venus and Mars. So something might, you know, be alerting you here today. And uh, if you have a partner, well then, it might be a situation between uh, you and him, or you and her, that needs to, to be tweaked, needs to be discussed. And be aware though, because there might be a little foggy communication today uh, as Mercury is squaring up to Neptune. And uh, so, you know, we might say one thing and then it's perceived totally different or vice versa. And when that happens, well, then we have a situation. So, but, you know, don't let it fester if you are not too sure what he or she said, you know, um, approach it. Don't let it fester more than a day. If you take charge already here on the 12th, uh, the day after, well, Mercury is going to be supported here by Mars, and Mars will give you the power to kind of like really push through and create clarity. For those of you not taking uh, that um, approach or that opportunity, 
uh, well then Venus is going to hurt and then uh, we have a situation here uh, on the 14th just two or three days later and then that's going to come up to the surface and then it's going to be more of a reactionary stage okay Venus and Pluto square it's like ah uh, that's the, the festering coming up here in a little volcano. <clears throat> so avoid that. That's never a good thing. Plus, you know, when, whenever Venus is threatened, you know, especially from Pluto, we're not talking love, you know. Venus reduces very quickly uh, to uh, the, the lower value of Venus, which then is money. So now in lack of feeling love and security, it's going to want to power over a, a financial situation. Never a good thing, okay? Keep that love going because then there's always a flow also with, you know, any kind of shared resources. Now we have the 15th. Okay, we're, we're really powering up here because we have aspects here. April represented uh, what I would like to say the labor pains, you know, before the birth. And uh, we have so much, you have so much uh, to look forward to because <clears throat> there is a celebration at the end of this grand square. Uh, but labor, yes, that can hurt. Delivery also can hurt, but then comes the celebration. That's the new doors opening up for you, Libra. So, hey, let's look at what's taking place now because we're nearly done with the hardships um, that so many have been feeling. We have on the 15th, <clears throat> Mercury and Venus, which is good. They're sextile and Mercury and Uranus is also sextile which is excellent. Why? Because on the same day we have Venus which is conjunct that Uranus. So what this means is that whatever communication either you initiate uh, or uh, you will hear about, there may be some good news here, uh, could represent breakthroughs. Why? Because when Uranus is here, when it delivers to you, it's so out of the blue when you expect it the least. You can go and wait and wait and wait for it days, you can wait and wait and wait for weeks, but then when Uranus uh, happens upon you, it's when you were looking or doing something else. So the 15th is good, and of course we just had, you know, that, that full moon here uh, the day before, so it's like on the 14th, it might be a little heavy, might be a little serious, because that full moon there is right there with Saturn, it makes us sober, makes us heavy. Uh, some might feel like, uh, I won't say depressed, but it, it, it could be because it's in a deep sign. But then here on the 15th, you're going to flip to the other end. A lot of excitement going on. It's going to pick up your energy. And now I see you over the next following days to the 18th thinking, okay, now what? Where do I go with this energy? And uh, so there's an expansion taking place, but you'll also feel a little tested on the 18th. So whatever good news on the 15th brought you or agreement that you had with your, your, your significant other, your lover, or maybe it's within work, well then um, the universe wants to know exactly how much uh, you want this or how committed you are. Or it may be you, you know, setting up a test for your partner or uh, supervisor, you know, how committed were they? to whatever promise came in on the 15th. So we have that. We have also the sun moving into your ninth house here on uh, the 20th. And uh, it, it's a sister sign to, to Libra. So, you know, it's always pleasant uh, when you have both sun and Mercury going through uh, this area because it supports you. It kind of gives you the wind under your wings. And so enjoyable for, for you know, into next month. Then we have uh, Jupiter. Jupiter here in this area of career, wanting to grow, wanting to expand, wanting to uh, secure, in fact. It's more like wanting to secure. This is a great time. There's good news here on the 24th of May. Um, and I, I feel it has to do with things that you're gonna come to value very, very much. Uh, there could also be an expansion to the family since it is in Jupiter, no, in Cancer. And uh, Jupiter giving now good roots down to uh, your foundation. So uh, pay attention to that. There might also be some financial news coming up on this day. Then we have the 28th. And Mercury and Venus here, they're communicating well. Uh, you're looking at your values. You're, you're communicating this. Uh, to your partner and uh, I'm feeling here that 
between you and uh, your significant other, you're, you're figuring it out. Uh, there's been some, you know, um, changes here within your routines uh, lately, and I'd say probably over the whole last year, year and a half. So it's more like I see you reflecting both of you of where you were, where you're at, and where you're heading, and uh, pretty much figuring out that, you know, it has been a great run. Then we have Venus now moving out of the seventh house uh, of relationships into the eighth house of intimacy. This is a deep month that you're going to be having next month. We'll talk more about that in June. But yes, it, it's a place where Venus uh, can thrive because it is a water house. So it really gets to, to uh, work with you, emote with you and your emotions. And uh, so it, it gives you that Plutonian Venus feeling because Pluto rules the eighth house. It's a scorpion house. And so this is why it becomes very intimate, and especially now here with Venus in a romantic way. For those of you looking to increase your financial uh, picture, I'd say that this is also going to be a great month into June uh, because of this very placement. And you know, when Jupiter, no, when Pluto turns on, it turns on big, all right? So uh, we'll talk about that next month as well. So the sun will be moving here on the 23rd. Uh, 31st. I'm sorry I can't talk right now. <laughs> so the Sun on the 31st is moving um, into a trine with Mars which is in your first house in your sign and the two of them are really going to power you up energetically. Okay, I see kicking into action and really feeling that uh, your life is uh, moving you know in a positive direction and for you this will be uh, definitely um, here uh, between you and wanting to reach out and expand your horizons, maybe even starting to look at taking some classes. Not necessarily like going back to school. School, this could also be a hobby based, something that gives you pleasure, something that can feed you energetically, which is creative pursuits will always be the best way to recharge our batteries. So, as you can see, <clears throat> we're still working on that grand square. Uh, I, I feel that a lot of you now have already uh, opened up new doors and you're starting to see what all this new is all about. Uh, the transformation between home and work and between yourself and your partner. It's really starting to uh, carve out that new path which is going to be with you for a long, long time to come. And others are still right there on the fence needing to make some decisions and that might be you and if that is the case trust it trust the process this is what Jupiter is asking you to do to stand in your truth act upon your truth speak your highest truth what you feel is fair for you as pertaining to the goals that you're trying to achieve as long as you do that fairness will balance these scales of Mars okay and Pluto will transform what needs to be transformed and Uranus will liberate you so you can feel free again and unchain the shackles that you might have felt here for a couple of years but they were necessary on some level some of you might be able to climb up to that higher level and look down on it in a perspective to just see how the universe was protecting you even when you might have been feeling that things were a little tight around you but now we're moving into that celebration phase. So Libra, I'm so excited to see your chart for next month. So uh, subscribe if you haven't, so you're sure to get it. And do go listen to your moon and your rising sign of when you leave. And I'll see you next month. Bye now.